Good morning. I thought I'd do a uh, video morning on this uh, particular software and how we can use it for asset management decision making. It's called Chat GPT. It's open AI, which means it uses artificial intelligence. And as I take you through, you'll see what, exactly what I mean. Um, it's, it's an incredible piece of work, this software. And it certainly will be extremely useful for engineers in asset management. So if I go to that screen, I've already logged in. So you, you just create a, a free account and then log in. So it's available to you right now. So let's have a look at it. I've already produced an example that I want to use uh, to make sure it does what it's supposed to do. And believe me, it does extremely well. Questions? So let's look at it. And I'll look at it for service levels. Uh, all I need to do is go to the chat screen and say, provide a list of service levels for roads. And now it's given me answers. So typical service levels for roads to be measured using range of indicators, the volume, traffic speed, traffic capacity, safety, reliability, and so it mentions that these are just a few examples, which they are. Now, a lot of people get stuck with uh, trying to identify or document service levels. Well, got it there. And from here, you can grow it. So if I said, provide me with service levels or condition, or the road network. Yeah, away it goes, it goes and gets the relevant information. Now it's not a connected to the internet as such. The way they do it is they feed the information through, or even if I think there's an answer that's wrong, or if you think there's an answer that's wrong, you can feed that answer back into the system as well to improve its responses. And that's what the focus is. So we've got here service levels for condition, we've got pavement and condition, structural integrity, drainage, traffic control, lighting, etc. So that just gives me an, all the condition indicators uh, with regards to the road network. Looking at a particular um, distress measures, what? Uh, the road distress measures. And it gives you a little bit of information about what they are. So we're looking at pavement distress, potholes, raveling, rutting. Now remember, this is all coming from its database in the background. So it's, it's gone through all the information relevant to roads and levels of service, and it's churning out the answers as it sees them. And it gives you a bit of inf uh, further information about what to do. So by monitoring for these other types of road distress, it remembers your previous conversation, which is great because it will follow up with the, what it produced the last time. It is possible to identify any issues with the road and to take appropriate action to address them. This can help to maintain the condition of the road and ensure the safety and performance of the road for all users. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is say, well, that's fantastic. 
provide me with quantified service levels and now I'm after the indicators let's see what it does obviously it checks for spelling errors put that in there they can be quantified using a range of measures depending on specific service levels and now it's going back to the volume and it's saying there for example a road with volume 1500 vehicles per hour speed current speed is 50 capacity got a capacity of 70 percent and it's designed to handle while the road capacity currently is 50 percent safety and reliability it's giving you further information if, if i then say tabulate these measures here's an example of how service levels of the road might be tabulated So we've got the measures for the levels of service as they were in 2020, 21, 22, and 23. Now, ideally, and this is why you're meant to put them in the asset management plan. I'm not going to talk about it in any great detail, but this is something you've got to consider. You need to be monitoring and monitoring the trends in these indicators. So here we have 2020, 21, 22, 23. We have safety accidents per year going up. I don't know how you have half an accident per year, but anyway, as an example, goes them increasing. Capacity is going down. More traffic comes on the road, and the speed is also slowing. And reliability is dropping. So let's take this one step further and say we'll pick one of those and try and determine when the works are to be done or what works are to be done and when they are to be done. So let's say reliability is dropping. So we just ask the question when will reliability drop to a 80 percent Okay, it says basically, okay, so what is said is, okay, if you want it 80%, it's already at 84%. So I've actually asked the question wrong. And what one of the tricks you have to learn with this software is how to ask the question that you're seeking the answers for. So what I should have said is, If the target service level for reliability is less than eighty percent, when is it likely to occur based on the above trends.
And quite correctly, it's saying it's not possible to determine it. What it's really saying to you at this stage is there's insufficient data that will allow it to determine when it will drop below 80%. And it explains that for itself. The timing and magnitude of changes in service levels can vary significantly depending on a range of factors, including condition of the road, the volume of traffic, the maintenance and repair works that are performed. So in order to determine the timing, any additional works that may be needed to improve or maintain the service levels of the road, you will need to consider your goals and targets for the road and how the changes in the service levels are affecting your ability to meet those goals. By analysing the trends and considering your goals, you can determine which works are needed to improve or maintain the levels of service on the roads. So it's actually answered correctly. It's saying, look, it's actually talking like a real consultant. It's saying we don't have enough information in its own way. And these are the things you need to do in order to get that information. There's ongoing monitoring of the service levels. And that's why we have harped on, uh, or at least for, another, uh, for at least 15 years, on monitoring your levels of service and checking the trends and then determining your works from that. So let's look at the next step then. Can't tell me that it works, but um, we can say what uh, the likely works we should do. Question mark. And again, quite correctly, it is saying it's not the specific works that may be needed to improve and maintain the service levels on the limited information provided. So it's actually saying, yep, sorry, I'm not an engineer. You haven't given me enough information. Uh, I can't tell you what the works are, and that's fair enough too, because you're the engineer. You determine the works that may be needed. You, what it will do is tell you what you need to do or what is likely. Uh, required so you can determine those works. So determine the works that may be needed. You will need to consider your goals and targets for the road and how current service levels are affecting your ability to meet those goals. You also need to consider the condition of the road and any issues or problems that may be affecting the service levels. By analysing the trends, and here we go, trends, and in the last plans I've been doing, I've been tabulating those trends for the clients uh, so they can start to look at these things. By analysing the trends and considering your goals, you can determine which works are needed to improve or maintain the levels of service on the road. Common types of works that may be needed to improve or maintain the service levels on a road include pavement rehabilitation or reconstruction, bridge repair or replacement, if there's a bridge there, drainage improvement, traffic control upgrades, and lighting improvements. So it's basically put it into a basket and says, says these are types. Now, if you wanted to know the detail, I go provide me with the detail. The detail of works. What? We'll see what it gives us. Here are some examples of works. Pavement rehabilitation or reconstruction, patching, crack filling, bridge repair, drainage improvements, traffic control upgrades, lighting improvements, etc. So it's giving you guidance as to what to look at, given these indicators, given the service levels you've got, and given the type of works that may be required. And as I say, it's come as far as it can, as far as this particular topic. But for a young engineer, 
working through the exercise or a young asset manager working through the exercise um, and determining levels of works and then tracking those levels of works. It's done wonderful considering it's the first version of this particular software. Picked it up, it's run with it, it's taking you through it and you can drill down as deep as the information is provided in the system. So the first version is absolutely brilliant. And, you know, I can sit here, if I was writing asset management plans, I could sit here and drill down into some of the questions and given clients' results and see what can be said if I had to. But also given the air, you cannot expect too much of it. A lot of uh, other industries are panicking with this sort of software because it's saying it's going to do away with their jobs and et cetera. Now, at this stage, I cannot see any, any possible way that can happen. What I'm seeing is it will complement or even supplement the work that you currently do on the ground. You then need to take the initiative and look at the trends and analyze the trends and see what needs to be done to improve the road network through the levels of service. And that's basically the exercise at the moment. Anybody who needs to think about documenting the levels of service, and there's a lot of people out there, a lot of organizations out there who are basically just taking samples off the top of their head. I have to be a bit harsh about it because I get tired of seeing it. You've got to look at your authority, your municipality, look at what's happening on the ground and set up your service levels depending on the issues of concern, the things you need to measure to see if there's any improvement in the future, uh, the levels of service you're going to adopt and the targets you're going to adopt. Once you do that, and you start measuring the trends, only then can you really make informed decisions about what's happening on the road network and what needs to be done, and therefore what budgets you need. So that's where it's at. This is a remarkable piece of software. It's available now. I, I have no um, buy in it, although I wish I had. Um, it is available now and is available just by registering for, registering for the free uh, software. So I suggest you try it out, see how it suits, look at it, understand the questions that you need to ask and the way of asking of them. Then you will get correct answers you need. And if it can't give you the answers, it's because you haven't provided the information. So you need to think about that as well. It's not going to give you the answer. Not at this stage. It may do in five years' time, ten years' time. But it's not going to give you the answer right now. What it will give you is the guidance needed to find the answer. Then it makes my job a little bit easier as well. So there you have it. The software chat, GPT, you'll find it on the internet, freely available. Have a go. It'll teach you, for a young engineer, as I said, it will teach you a bit about what needs to happen, but don't take the answers like anything else. Don't take the answers as correct. You need to think about it, and you need to look at it and drill down but having that understanding, you'll be able to do that and be able to select or look at the information and say, well, what is it I really need to know? And drill down with the right questions to get there. Great piece of software. I'm going to sign off for now. But there it is. I'll keep you informed with other software and other technology as it becomes available. And you just go to my Patreon site, become a patron member. Um, you'll have access to all the videos that I produce. You'll have access to um, 
various documents okay? uh, based on the tiers that you select on my patron site. So there you go. If you're searching for the patron site, just go or patreon.com, log in and uh, search for me, Sandy Muir, and asset management. You'll find it. There's not too many there. Okay. Cheers for now.